too many screens open. Got to hit record. So um, we're here with Chin Wei. She is the CEO of Pocket Suite, where she's responsible for growth strategy and partnerships. And Pocket Suite's a mobile app that helps anyone with clients manage their clients, payments, and businesses all from their phone. And it's great for people who work for themselves and make a good living, um, whether they're working for themselves with team members or their community. So I'm going to turn it over to um, Chin Wei. And again, one housekeeping thing before we start, because I know people are going to chat about it. Um, I, once the webinar is done and I have the recording and, I'm, and it's up on um, a web page, I will email everybody with that link. And I will also email you the info on how to get your CEU. So that will be forthcoming after the uh, event is recorded. And so I'm going to let Chin Wei take it away. Thank you so much, Michelle. It's a pleasure to speak with the Firelink uh, digital community. Um, I've got to say, Michelle, you are a rare uh, breed, pun intended, uh, in terms of really being um, you know, a, a multiplier, someone who helps folks automate their business, streamline their business, and, and make uh, put them in a position to do their best work and live their best life. So that's what we think about automation. We'll, we'll get into it. Thanks so much um, to everyone who's joining live, excited to, to dig into a subject that I really, really enjoy talking about, uh, which is how uh, pet professionals can, can really uh, take charge of their business, take their business to the next level with technology uh, and with automation. Uh, so the theme here is prioritizing for 2022. I think we all are feeling the looming, uh, you know, deadline of 2021 being up. And I don't know about you, but I felt like it went by really fast it, as compared to 2020, where we were all just <laughs> waiting for 2020 to be over. And so now we're in this state of sort of thinking about and feeling more confident about the economy, feeling more confident about our business prospects, and really feeling bullish about what we can do to take our business the next level. And so how do you prioritize amongst all of the things that you are hoping and dreaming for your business? Um, we have some very specific ideas that um, hopefully enable uh, your goals for, for 2022. Um, so just a, a little tidbit, Michelle did a great job of, of providing background on Pocket Suite. What, what I'll say just about myself is that I'm a recovering management consultant. I used to work for McKinsey and Company. Um, and you know, I tell people that when, uh, when I was coming up, um, I just have always been obsessed with business models and helping businesses. Um, when I was uh, nine years old, we did lemonade stands and I was the one who wrote the business plan for the lemonade stand. It wasn't just about our block. I was looking to create a, a lemonade stand on every block. And, and so I've, I'm always uh, really focused on and excited about helping businesses achieve their income goals, grow and, and really live their best life. Um, I went from management consulting to raising money for small businesses. I raised $150 million for small businesses. Typically, uh, we worked for service professional businesses, um, and these were either businesses of one or businesses of five or, or smaller. So this was exactly the category of business that we work with today at Pocket Suite. And when I was helping them raise money, the thing I was uh, really most shocked by is that um, when I looked under the hood of these businesses, the vast majority of them were not getting paid on time, were not getting paid quickly, and oftentimes were spending a significant amount of their time just organizing their schedule and, and following up with clients on routine things. And I thought, gosh, what could, what could these entrepreneurs do if they uh, were able to put their payments um, you know, sort of billing system into autopilot with packages and subscriptions and, and scheduled invoices. What could these businesses do if they were able to uh, automate their booking and, and automate all of the, the reminders and contracts and forms that they use around their booking process? And so that I started getting obsessed with that more than raising the money. And I thought, gosh, if I could solve that problem, I actually might be in a position to help these businesses not need the money uh, because they no longer are having to, to, to really finance their clients you know, paying them um, with delays. And I would also be able to potentially shift why businesses are raising money to raise money to invest in actual growth, not just in, in working capital. So that's what started my obsession. We ultimately created Pocket Suite um, 
focused on solo service professionals and small teams. And really excited to say that we have 5,000 uh, businesses that are uh, getting booked and paid and you know managing all of their client interactions on PocketSuite. Our largest, our single largest category of businesses are pet professionals, dog trainers, walkers, groomers, sitters, uh, and so on within our, <clears throat> within our sort of world and ecosystem. We have about half a million consumers who are booking and paying these pros on PocketSuite. And the um, the typical pro in general is making about fifty thousand a year. Our pet professionals are making between sixty and one hundred twenty thousand a year on Pocket Suite, uh, which is really exciting. And it's typically about thirty percent more than their peers uh, that aren't necessarily using our automation tools. So more on that. Um, and then there are a number of other stats that. Um, that hopefully you can get excited about. But Pocket Suite knows the, the pet professional business very well from a technology perspective. We don't know anything about the, the actual technical uh, side of training uh, dogs or walking dogs or what have you, but we've learned a lot from uh, the businesses that are pet professional businesses that are running on Pocket Suite really successfully. <clears throat> Um, we are a desktop and a mobile app, so um, we designed this to be a mobile first app because many of our, our businesses are on the go. So we wanted you to have full access to your business and your clients uh, from on, at, like in the palm of your hands. <clears throat> so let's talk 2022. I know uh, many of you have plans, big plans, and we want to um, see all of those plans um, come to fruition and reduce the amount of work that it's going to take you to get those plans done and to keep doing the great stuff you're already doing. Um, if you're like uh, if like you're like me or, or many other pet professionals, you're you're jotting down your goals. Uh, you want to do more of what's working with your clients, whether it's offering the services and the classes, whether it's open enrollment or series classes, continuing to provide you know packages or add-on products um, for your clients. You want to do what what's working, do more of it. Uh, you want to also find great new clients, um, whether it's making yourself more visible on social media and maybe. Be being able to showcase some of your great work in terms of videos or tutorials so more people can find you, buy into your approach and, and um, do that first consultation or assessment. Um, you're looking to achieve your income goals. If you're already there, you want to sustain it or take it to the next level. If you're not yet quite there, you want to figure out how to close the gap. Uh, and then finally, you want to take more time for family, for fun, for friends and, and breaks um, and, and really do, you know, do the thing that delights you most about the work that you do. So lots of really, really bold and, and worthy, I think, goals. And the question is, how do you, how do you get there in 2022? So the first thing we want to talk about is building on what works for your existing clients. Well, um, a key thing that um, that's important is to really break these big goals, which feel like, you know, audacious, hairy goals. But but it's like, well, how do I break that down into something that's actually actionable? And then, like, where do you layer on automation and streamlining? So that's how we're going to sort of break these things up. And, and hopefully as we go through this, some of this stuff resonates with you and you sort of jot down some ideas for how you might be able to pull this forward in your own business. Um, so there are four kind of thoughts about how you might take what, what's already working with your existing clients and, and take it to the next level. Um, the first is making it just easier for your existing clients to manage their, uh, their experience with you, manage their appointments, manage their classes, and um, to be able to get access to you when they need without you necessarily being a bottleneck for them being able to reach you and, and get on your calendar. Um, the second is, you want to make sure that those that have been booking and paying you for uh, for a long time or those that are considered kind of VIPs in the context of um, the work that they're doing with you, that they feel like they're getting the royal treatment, which means that you're always up to speed on the latest and greatest uh, as it relates to the pet parents and what's going on with their pet, that you always have at your finger trip tips uh, that next set of um, advice or tips for them in terms of how they can continue to grow and sustain their relationship uh, with their pets and that they are in sort of, in some ways, an, an autopilot uh, with you in terms of that, that booking cadence and really working through whatever program you've designed for them. Um, the third is that clients should always know uh, what you expect from them and uh, so that they're ready to go at showtime. Um, at the most basic level, that includes just reminders about when they're supposed to be connecting with you next. Um, and, you know, in a more advanced context, it's 
they are ready with whatever prep they need. Did they practice the homework that you gave them? Did they watch the videos? Did they, you know, give the dog a treat when the dog stood up or, or, or when the, when the dog rolled over? Like, what are the set of things that they've done? Did they, uh, did they reward the cat when, when they peed in the, in the, in the lit, in the kitty litter? Like, what are the set of things that they are doing that is supposed to really get them ready for that next, uh, experience with you? To what extent are they getting that information ready for it and um and ready to go and then finally making sure that even after your work with the client has been completed that they really do feel that you're still uh care caring for them that you're still you know you still could have one one touch away uh from continuing that relationship them following up on something that you've shared with them um, or them you know sharing the the good word with with other folks who may may benefit from from your services um so those are kind of four ideas for how you can continue to build on what's great with your existing clients now let's talk new clients it's always exciting to go out and and hunt and and think about where um where can i find new clients who are just going to be where a big just going to be saying where have you been all my life once they hear about your services and see how you can can really help them with their pets um, so with new clients, the first and foremost is how are people discovering me and to, to what extent can I be um, more visible uh, in the places where I get the best and most, you know, sort of the, the, the best clients that fit, you know, the, the, sort, the sort of focus that I really have, whether it's a behavioral focus, whether it's an age, you know, focus in terms of like puppies versus uh, more mature um, dogs and so on and so forth. So where am I? Where am I going? Where am I showing um, my services? Is it on social media? Um, are you doing an, uh, videos on YouTube with your own channel? Are you uh, focused on Facebook and creating a Facebook group, and giving people tips? What are the set of things you're doing? Are you creating an email newsletter? What are the things you're doing to be out there? One of the best examples I have for, um, we, we surveyed a number of our most successful um, uh, pet professionals and we asked them how they got their first 20, 30 clients. And without fail, uh, the, the, the two two most uh, mentioned kind of tips and tricks is they went to the dog park and they just started, you know, they, with their dogs and they just started showing, you know, what they could do with the dogs. And of course, you know, you know, these pet parents are like surrounding them saying, how are you doing this? And they're handing out business cards or they created a relationship with a local vet um, and they sort of said, hey, I'm happy to come for consultations. And that sort of spawned a whole set of other things. Or they volunteered at a shelter um, and started providing um, classes that really opened up opportunities to have actually a more formal relationship with the shelter. And then of course, with, with folks beyond their, their adoption, that initial adoption uh, step. So, so lots of great ideas online and offline for how to make yourself visible. But then the question is, well, how do you, how do you automate that? So we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, the, the next thing is, how do you ensure that the good word travels with the friends and family of your existing clients? This is when we ask folks, what's the biggest driver for new clients? They say word of mouth referrals and, and then they and then they hesitate and they say two things. One is uh, they don't like asking for referrals because it just kind of creates a weird space. Um, so that that's sort of like, well, OK, well, how do you take the, the the sort of awkwardness out of asking for the referral and make it part of the just the routine of, of the sort of system level interactions that you're having with folks? And then secondly, um, they never know when their next referral is coming so that they're just it's not systematic, it's spontaneous, it's hard hard to track, it's hard to reward people once they have sent a referral. So there's all sorts of friction in this important driver of new uh, client um, discovery and acquisition uh, that we can actually streamline with automation. The third thing is, how do you ensure that those folks who do hear about your services have instant access to find out more? about your business, right? So if they have to call you and wait for a call back when you're reaching out and engaging existing clients uh, in the field or at their homes, that's going to be a delay. And if they have an urgent need, they're going to keep calling until somebody picks up. So how do you create a dynamic where you've made visible the, the key things that are most important for people, your availability, your pricing, you know, your approach to, to training and the range of, of services and, and offerings that you have? How do you make that visible the moment someone looks you up online uh, because that ultimately makes the difference between somebody who then gets locked in versus someone who moves on to to uh, to an, an, another 
another another trainer, another walker, uh, um, you know, another another sitter. And then finally, um, once somebody has said, I'm on board, sign me up or have has tried to book an appointment, how do you collect all of the information you need in one swoop? I've got to tell you, the forms and the contracts, of course, they're critical, but they can be such a pain for certainly for you, but also for your clients who are, oh gosh, I've got to figure out where I can print this. And now I'm going to find a fax machine, which I don't own. So I'm going to create an e-fax account. And, and so there's just so many things and they're taking photos of the, of the contracts that they've just signed and sending it to you and texting it to you. There's so much friction in these forms and contracts. And then even when you get them, it's really hard to keep them organized and in one place because everybody's sending to you a different way um, and so it's incredibly hard to access so there's ways to streamline that too so I would say that the new client uh, process is a, is a big one and you want to think about what we can do there to, to make improvements income goals all right so these are going to sound a little bit like kind of like like um mandates or, or affirmations my time will be respected and valued well what does that mean well when people book you, uh, that's time that you are taking off the table, right? That means when someone else looks at your calendar, that's not going to show up. Well, that's really, really important and really valuable to take time off the calendar. Well, what is your client and what is your, that lead doing in return to show that they value that time? Are you asking them to link you know, their credit card to that calendar? So if they cancel last minute or don't show, you can be remunerated, remunerated something for that time. Are you requiring a deposit? So these are the things that are really important to ensure that your time is proactively respected and valued. Uh, my pricing will be competitive with the market. Uh, I've got to tell you, if you're part of an industry association like PPG, um, you're in a really great position to really see uh, and get some comparisons for what should I be pricing this at in my metro area for these services. So are you connected to a network? Do you have that data and access to really ensure that you are you know, benchmarking um, your services and always getting paid um, you know, at a competitive rate? One of the things I've, I've been told by pet professionals is that you often undervalue yourselves, right? Like you have this amazing skill and talent, but it's like you feel kind of awkward pricing it to, to market. And so really getting confident around that by show, by seeing the data and seeing that, you know, the, the clients actually very much value it and will pay for it. Um, are my available hours fully booked? Um, this is really important because there's two elements to it. One is, is am I getting... The, the full scope of the demand, are they seeing my available time? Um, so one of the things that happens is people might say, hey, reach out to me if you're interested, right? Already, you're gonna have some people who are just, who just opt out of that, right? Because they wanna immediately see your availability and book it. They don't want the back and forth. So are you getting the full demand uh, to see your available time so you can see how many people actually want this service at this time? you know so so you can see the full capacity we'll talk a little bit about, about wait lists and that kind of thing so even if you're not able to accommodate everybody you now know oh wow five people booked this class and that was the capacity but there's a wait list of 15. so now i have a sense that i actually could support you know maybe two classes um you know for for this particular um offering uh I will be paid up front or on time for my services. Uh, what, one of the things we, we really talk about and emphasize is um, with things like, uh, you know, sort of dog training, even dog walking, pet sitting, this is a recurring income model. And so it's just not a one and done where like a wedding planner, it's like, okay, fine, I'm gonna get married once, we're done. But with, with, with um, you know, pet professional services, you're being paid regularly. So how do you create a recurring income model with that? How do you create packages where people can buy a, a, a bundle of appointments right up front? So you don't have to worry about the back and forth and you can focus on working them through the program and delivering on outcomes. Or if you you have you know puppy socials where people are actually engaging regularly how do you get them on a subscription or a membership program where they're auto charged for that service where they can use it when they want and it's in some ways it's almost like an insurance they use it when they want and when, when they're traveling or don't need it um, they don't use it but they have it available to them but how do you get them in autopilot and at at worst a scheduled invoice this is what we see a lot of uh, dog walkers using right where it's like hey look I'm picking up the dog three to five times a week in some cases 
multiple times a day, I'm not going to send you an invoice every day. That's like, an, that's a nightmare, right? And I'm not going to wait two weeks to build up, you know, you know, a, a ton of time, you know, and then have to track back every single session. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a scheduled invoice that's just going to grab the appointments automatically and place them because those appointments have already been scheduled and they're recurring. It's just going to automatically map them to an invoice and send it out to you every three days or every week. And you're able to pay it on rotation and you don't have to be involved in the billing process at all because you've set that thing in motion and in autopilot. So I'm, I'm getting into the automation already because it's so exciting. But the point is that you really want to be paid either upfront or on time for your services like clockwork. You sh like clockwork. You shouldn't have to jump in there and be manually uh, sending bills to, um, to, to your clients because this is a service that they've already said is something that's a critical part of their, their household and their lifestyle. Will clients look to me for additional value added services and resources? We saw this category explode during COVID, right? So you had people going online and offering, you know, Zoom, um, you know, or WebEx related training. So people were paying the same amount that they were paying for in-person. I've had some really exciting conversations with those who have built their online business to even exceed their in-person business. And they say, in some cases, it takes some of the you know behavioral issues that come up with somebody new in the household coming in and trying to learn the behavior of the dog or the cat takes it out of the equation and the pet parent is the one really sustaining that relationship and learning that uh, those those techniques directly um so that's one two is I, I saw people get into subscription service business. Like you have these relationships with these pet parents and they're constantly asking you for advice. Hey, what kind of leash should I buy? What kind of pet food should I buy? What, what are other things, toys should I use with my dog? And so some have created subscription businesses where they send them a box, much like Chewy. Uh, they send them a box that is like a box of toys or a box of treats that are personalized given your approach, given your preferred brands. And that's an additional service um, that that pet parents are super excited about. And so they've added these additional add-on products to their business that they've layered right into their kind of booking flow, into their, um, into their workflow, which is really awesome. That's increased their income. And then finally, I will always know the health of my income and business. Um, and you, you might be saying, of course I do, because I can just look at my bank account. Well, well, here's the here's the challenge. You know, your bank account is giving you the state of your income today. It is not giving you a picture of your forecasted income based on things that are on your calendar that have already been booked with credit cards on hold. And it also isn't giving you a sense of the different kind of um, of segments of income and drivers in, of income. It's not telling you what's your top service. It's not telling you what's your best source for acquiring clients. It's not giving you all of the details and analytics that help you make changes in your business that make your business even healthier. Um, so you really wanna ensure that you actually have that visibility into your, not just your full income uh, today, but your forecasted income and then what the key drivers of your income are. Um, the number one thing I hear people saying is, oh yeah, you can Venmo me, cash at me, pay me on PayPal and Square. Sure, that's super convenient for clients, but guess what? It's incredible, incredibly difficult to know what payment was tied to what appointment was tied to what. And so now you've got things on your calendar and you don't know, are these paid appointments? Are they not paid? And, and you're constantly having to follow up and triangulate and connect the dots. That's a lot of friction. Um, so there's a better way. And then finally, make more time for breaks and fun. And I, you know, maybe you're smiling and saying, oh, sure, fine. Um, but the reality is you got into business for yourself because you wanted to have more control over your time and in your life. And what many people find is like, oh my gosh, I have even less time than I did when I was working, you know, for someone else. And it's like, well, that's not quite right, is it? And, and there's this, this kind of like vicious spiral where you can't get out of it. And so we've seen people do some really 
like clever things to ensure they're able to get out of it. The the very sort of like straightforward is just blocking your time. Um, so that like you proactively are able to say, this is when I'll be offline. But then there's anxiety around, well, when, you know, how do my clients know? And how do I ensure that that business goes else, you know, goes to another date and time and I don't lose it. Um, so there are definitely some things that you can do. So here are a few things that we are um, looking at as we think about more, more times for breaks and fun. One is just celebrating your clients and um, celebrating their pets at critical milestones. Oftentimes you take in all of this information about date of birth and anniversaries, but then it goes in a filing cabinet or it's stuck in some database. And it's really hard for you to keep track because literally on any given day, somebody celebrating a milestone or, or a birthday. What if you could send personalized messages, set them right up front, and then the system kind of knows when these milestones happen and that message goes out in a personalized way at the right time. I've got to tell you without fail, it's like magic. Pet professionals are getting responses from clients for messages that they created right when they set up. Like, thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. And you're like, yeah, you know, like it's, it's just the love keeps happening, right? So there's a lot of ways for you to kind of set it and forget it. And so some of these breaks and fun are not necessarily time outside of your business, it's just having more fun with the business that you have. Um, making sure your clients have advanced notice when you're away on holidays. A way to send a group message to your clients so they know when you're gonna be offline and have your booking calendar locked in with that same time frame, so they have perfect information about when you're back and when you're available. They don't have to scroll back to that message to figure out when you're coming back, right? Um, creating an extended network and you many of you already have you know dog trainers walkers sitters this ecosystem this kind of tribe that you refer back and forth to but oftentimes those referrals are kind of clunky it's like hey yeah contact this person and there's emails going back and forth and it's not really easy to to kind of onboard and offboard clients during those uh break and away away times there's actually a more systematic way to be able to easily refer when you're offline um, and be able to track what referrals happened and make sure those referrals kind of end when when you're back online. So just making it really seamless, taking some of the things you're doing in the analog world and, and making them digital. And then finally, making sure that when you're offline, you don't lose business. So the classic is, you know, someone calls you or texts you and you don't respond because you're on the beach or you're hiking or you're just, you know, off the grid and the person can't reach you, doesn't get a response in a certain amount of time, so they move on. But what if you could set up an away message and they could see, you know, you could say, hey, I'm offline right now, but we'll get back to you. Please tap on my booking link to see my availability and get on my calendar. No time wasted. They grab your booking link. They see what they need. They get on. You're fine. Um, oftentimes it's the silence that kills people. But if you can direct them in that away message to a place where they can see your calendar, you're back in business. Um, so and again, I'm, I'm getting into the solution because I'm always so excited about it. But these are these. Are, this is kind of what we're talking about. When we're talking about make more time for breaks and fun. It's ensuring that when you're away, you don't feel like you're losing out. Right, that whole FOMO. It's like you're away, but your business is still working on your behalf. All right, so now let's get into it, right? So we've identified all of these resolutions and now it's like, well, okay, well, what do I do? How do I get it done? I'm not going, going to go into each one into detail. I'm gonna share a few examples just to give you some color, um, but there's a lot there and we can get into it on a, in a, in a follow-up um, conversation if, if you're interested. Um, so a few things to just mention here. Um, clients will have easy access to manage their experience with me. Online booking is, is really the answer here. This is what we're calling, um, if you have a website already, if you don't have a website, you're fine. It's a booking site. It's a site that has a full list of all of your services, your packages, your subscriptions, whatever it is you offer, add-on products. Someone can tap on that link just like they would tap on your website. If you have a website, it shows up as a book now button on your website. So they go to your website, they see all the lovely stuff, your background, your history, and then they're ready to book. Tap book now, great the booking site opens up and it has the same services, but now those are actionable because if they tap on any one of the services, they now will see your calendar and that calendar is real time. That calendar is auto syncing to your Google calendar or your iCalendar. So it has perfect information as to your true availability. It doesn't show any of your personal appointments, but if you do have personal appointments or existing bookings, it will just show those as not available. So it's perfect information for that service or for that that class as to whether it's available for booking. 
so they can go right on through. And the beauty is that there's a checkout experience just like an Amazon checkout experience where, okay, I've picked my, uh, I picked my service for my class, I've picked the date and time, and now I'm going to either see the location or choose my location. And then I am going to add my credit card if I want, if I have a cancellation, pol if, the, if you as a pro have a cancellation policy, they will add a credit card that will be charged if they cancel outside of that policy. Um, if not, you can at least collect a deposit or have them pay in full for the service, um, whatever it happens to be, or buy a package. So there's a full checkout flow and here's the beauty. Even in that checkout flow, you can add questions that you want them to answer. So no faxing or emailing a separate form or contract. That contract's right there as they're checking out. They read it, they sign it, they check out. That's, that contract is sent to you directly in, in your app. You've, and they've got a copy of it too. It's magical. It's a it's a 10 minute checkout if you have forms and contracts. It's a two minute checkout if you if you don't. It's magical and you can add this to your Instagram profile, to your Facebook, to your website, anywhere online, to your industry, to a directory on you, for your industry association. Anywhere you are, you can make it easy for people to access you. I, I note that because that's sort of like a game changing automation. It, it basically brings everything together in one flow and makes it silly simple for, for your clients and for you. Okay, so, so that's one example. The other example I will share is this whole notion of clients will know what's expected of them and me before showtime. If, if folks are booking you two weeks, three weeks, four weeks in advance, it's unreasonable to expect they're going to remember all of the prep items and the details. They're living their life, managing a lot of different things. Now, reminders go a long way. So basic reminders are reminders that can be set to go out two days, three days, 24 hours, two hours before the appointment. So you can set whatever frequency you want those reminders to go out, say, hey, reminder, you've got an appointment. An advanced reminder would be something that includes not just the date and time of the appointment, but it also includes, hey, here's a link to the prep homework again, just in case you didn't finish it. Here's the directions to my location, just in case. So it adds some additional information that you might have shared already on the appointment or elsewhere, but it puts it right in front of them again at the appropriate time. So that's a really powerful way to send a prep before appointment campaign. And what happens is you don't have to do anything. All you do is set this campaign up as you're setting up your, your booking system. And then anyone who books that appointment or that class automatically gets that prep before the appointment, before the time. So you don't have to work with it again. It automatically is triggered based on someone booking you for that appointment and the requisite frequency that you set of that reminder. It's done, you've personalized it, it's magical. Um, so those are examples. And then the final example is um, this notion of clients feeling cared for after your time together. I think this is one we often give short shrift because it's like, you know, you maybe you've sent, you've said the thank you, it was a pleasant experience, you know they were satisfied and like, you've gotta move on, right? Cause you've got hundreds, potentially, you know, dozens of clients and there's just no way to keep up with all of that. Just like you can set up a prep before appointment message, you can also set up a post appointment message. So you set that up right when you're setting up the prep before appointment message. And it's a post appointment message that's really, in many cases, is a question. It's like, hey, how are you doing? Anything new come up since our training? Any lessons learned or things you would like to share? Um, article, you could include an article or a tip. You can include a video. You can include anything you want before, after, with that post appointment message, and it will go out at the time you send it. It could be a day after, it could be a week after. You could set up five of them, one that goes out a day after, another that goes out two weeks after. And so this client's like, oh my gosh, this pro is amazing. They keep thinking about me. They're always sending me tips still. Um, it's connected. Um, so it's a really powerful way to stay in touch, to still personalize that touch, but to not have to keep all of those that information in your head. So those are a few examples. Okay, so new clients. I've already talked about this notion of how will new prospects discover me. The only thing I'll say there is you've got to add an online booking link there. For those that are saying, look, I don't want anyone who hasn't seen me for time to book me initially. I really want to see whether it's a good fit before they book me. 
no problem. What you add to your website or to your social media at that point is really a lead form. It's a lead form that has a series of questions for them, that has them explain what they're looking for, has them answer some questions that help you make an assessment or help you get prepared to do a phone-based or an in-person consultation with them so that you can then really get a sense of whether it's a good fit before they then move forward with the actual booking. Um, so no matter what, you should still add that link, whether it's a lead form link or an online booking link to your social media, to your website, wherever you can online, including Google My Business, in order to ensure that people who are looking for the first time and thinking about using your service have a clear path to be able to do that. The other thing I'll mention is uh, in terms of, uh, you know, people who might have questions that just really go beyond um, you know, the very standard questions that you could put on your booking site. Live chat is awesome. You can put a live chat widget on your site. And here's what's powerful about live chat. Although they're on your website and they're asking questions in that live chat, that message is showing up for you as almost a text message. So you're getting it no matter where you are and you don't have to interrupt anything else you're doing. You can see when you respond, it shows up on your website in that chat for that person. And it also collects their information. It collects their phone number and their email address. So if for whatever reason that chat ends or you drop off or they drop off, you now have a new client, a new lead in your app, new information that you can then follow up on to continue the conversation. So live chat is magical because Remember I mentioned demand. You never really know how many people are really looking for your services. People come to your website every day and you have no clue that they came, what they were looking for. You have no way to follow up with them because you might have analytics like, oh, I got a visitor, but you have nothing more. With live chat, you now can pull someone into a flow that gives you that contact information and potentially some insights based on their questions that then gives you a thread that you can then continue to pull on to, um, to acquire that new client. So those are some really powerful automations. The final one I'll talk about with new clients is request a referral. So remember how I said it, it can be awkward to request that referral because what if they say no or it's, you know, is this the right time? And what's powerful is you can set up a post appointment message that's automatic that goes out to all of your clients and you can do it in a couple of ways. There are some folks who say, hey, I don't want to ask for a referral until I get like a sense of whether they were satisfied with my service. So what you can do is you can say, OK, great the day after ideally the sooner the better because otherwise they'll forget the day after or immediately after i finish a booking um send this message saying hey i hope you enjoyed the services um i really would love a review from you please um you know great review from you uh if you had an awesome time if you didn't have an awesome time i would really love to understand where i missed the mark or where i could have uh, where we could have um done better so we can improve our services for you um please share that with me directly or i'll follow up with a call right so that goes out automatically to every client so if you're seeing 10 clients a week or you have classes with 30 you know pet parents a week imagine the number of reviews that you're potentially going to be getting the rule of thumb is you get you get actually 15 to 20 percent conversion rate on those messages 15 to 20 percent of 10 clients a week or 30 clients a week you will be the number one rated dog trainer cat trainer on google because what they do is they they you rise in the search ranks based on the number of reviews you have four or five star reviews you have in your metro area so they focus on your zip codes and you rise to the top and so that will automatically get you even more leads just by growing your google reviews and so that's a really powerful way to get reviews now what we end up seeing is for those who have answered the reviews um, or a certain period of time after the review request you basically send another a message which is again automated that says hey thanks so much for your business i really would love for you to share my services with your friends and family you know i'd love to continue to, to spread you know the love or or provide my training here's a gift card for to for you to share with your you know five dollar gift card ten dollar gift card for you to share with someone else who you know is a, a pet parent that could benefit from my services so they can easily pass on that gift card which then pulls in additional referrals for you so you can provide a give or you can make the give to the the, the client hey i will provide you ten dollars uh you know ten dollar gift card for your next visit 
if you provide this referral. So lots of ways to do it and it's perfect tracking. So again, it goes out automatically with every appointment or every new appointment. Maybe you don't wanna ask your regulars every time, but you can, it can go out with every new appointment. And then that automatically sets a chain reaction in terms of referrals that you'll be getting. So no longer are you wondering when the next referral's coming in, you now know that 10% of all of my new clients give me a referral within 30 to 60 days and I provide them a five to $10 gift card. It's a magical system that creates this funnel for you that ultimately gets you to your goal number of clients and gets you to your goal number of goal income. So powerful, powerful stuff. Um, so achieve your um, income. There is so much that, that is, um, is possible to achieve your income. I'm gonna talk about the low hanging fruit. If you don't have a cancellation policy, you need to get one in place. And the magic about cancellation policy is it's stated up front when folks are booking, they see it in your checkout flow, they understand it, and they put their credit card on file with that understanding. And only if they, they cancel outside of your cancellation window or cancel or no show, does that cancellation policy, cancellation fee get auto charged? Remember, it's auto charged. You don't have to chase them down. It's auto charged. So you're able to be remunerated for that time, um, but you don't have to worry about it. Now, some people say, oh, but a cancellation policy is a little harsh. I don't want to make an enemy or get a bad review from a client. Here's what I'll say. Clients actually feel bad, right, when they have to cancel late. And as long as your cancellation fee is reasonable, you know, not like 100% of the fee, it's reasonable. Uh, clients, they get it and understand. And for those clients that don't, you know, usually they'll follow up and say, well, I'm really unhappy with that. And these are clients who don't end up rescheduling, right? You can follow up and, and, and do carve outs if you feel the need, but it's, it's, it's unfair for um, folks not to value your time. And so a cancellation policy is one way to do it. The other is wait list. You have these classes, you've created a capacity based on the room size, uh, you know, based on the park location, based on the home, but you don't yet know your full demand. And so if you can have a class that actually allows for a wait list, mind you, that wait list still encourages people to schedule another date. So you don't lose that person. It's still, they still schedule another date that's a less preferable date. But in the event that someone in your current class cancels last minute, what happens is anyone on the wait list gets automatically booked in to the class. And by the way, their credit card was already added at the time they were added to the wait list. So it's auto charged at that time and they're in. And they had to fill out the forms and contract at the time they were added to the wait list. So everything's ready and they're ready to go in that slot. And so you don't have to do the back and forth and calling, can you make it? And all of that just to fill that space. Um, so that's really, really important because those are two really powerful ways to get to your goal income. Um, the, the other one that I'll talk about is this concept of open enrollment. This one is a really hot one that folks are super, super excited about uh, because the, the, the traditional um, class format is you know the drop-in class where people can just come and it sort of fills up when it fills up or the series class where you have to book into the whole series up front, every class up front, the dates are locked. And once people book in, that's kind of it. If one date doesn't work for them, they can't do the series at all right? Um, or if the first class is full, but you know, they can't do the series at all. With open enrollment, people will be able to book into the series, but they can actually, uh, they can actually connect with the classes as they want. So they can kind of pick the dates of the classes that they want to participate in. So uh, they don't have to pick all or none in terms of the series dates, which ensures that you can maximize your, your income, maximize the relevant demand, and always have a rolling schedule where you have some category of people graduating and another category of people who are still in the class and still moving through. Um, so it's a really powerful way to, again, maximize your income, particularly when you're first getting started and you don't necessarily have a full book of clients that are ready to go for the entire series. Um, so a lot of other really cool um, ways to increase your income. The one other way that I'm going to talk about here is the leaderboard. So wouldn't it be awesome if you could uh, sign into uh, to an app or sign into a place where you could actually see a leaderboard within your industry of of dog trainers, of cat trainers, of dog walkers, and see what their income levels are, and and you can see like how many bookings they have. So you can actually start to see the metrics of their business and start to learn and what their pricing is. So you can say, oh, wow, they're they're pricing 20% more. Uh, I wonder if I could price that. So it's an anonymous leaderboard, but it's one where you can connect to others who are in your industry, who are rooting for you, who wanna see you win, and who are learning from you and also sharing with you your best practice, their best practices. 
And you know that as they're talking, they know what they're talking about because they're already generating income in their business that demonstrates that they have had success in that field. So it's a powerful place. It's different than your Facebook group or other groups that you might be a part of where it's it's connected around the same industry, but you don't really know like, does this person really kind of know what they're talking about in terms of like getting repeat bookings or reducing cancellations with this one you have great information about where their success is what their income is and how you can improve and grow in that same way so super super powerful way to get ideas for how to increase and grow your income Finally, I already spent a fair amount of time on take more breaks and have fun. So uh, I'll just call out some of the things I already talked about. Smart campaign anniversary message. This is the autopilot message. So once you take someone's date of birth, once you take their their, their pet's um, you know, birth date or anniversary date, it'll automatically send a message to them, potentially a promotion, a special offer that congratulates them without you having to remember, but it's personalized. So they respond to you and say, thank you so much for that great message. So it's a really powerful thing to do. For those of you that have more than one person working with you and you're part of a team and you're having to juggle a lot of different tools, one thing you can do to just take the friction out of your interactions is that you can have all of your team members in one account. So as you add team members, it makes it easy for people who want to book that particular team member, or if you want that team member to get auto assigned certain appointments, you get that going. So you don't have to do the back and forth and the connection and okay, here's the contract and form for that client. Take a look at it. It's all in one place. That team member has full access to the, the, the information for the clients and the appointments that they are supporting. Um, but you are controlling where the payments go, the income, and clearly the, the relationship with that client. So it's a really powerful way to streamline your interactions. If you're working with a team of folks to do the work, the great work that you're doing. And I also mentioned the missed call message, missed text message. If you get a call and you're on vacation, there's an automatic message that goes out to whoever called saying, you know, whatever personalized message you have to say, and then there's a booking link or whatever link you want them to complete so that they have information and can continue to take action while you're away. Same thing for text messages. Um, so those are examples of how to get your New Year's resolutions done and, and moving in the right direction. We have a lot of success stories of pet professionals who have really taken um, you know, the reins and run with it. The, the ones that we've circled are our PPG members who have had a tremendous amount of success in very different ways. I'll go through it very quickly. Um, Sarah M um, was a, uh, used to work with a vet vets and did a ton of work um, really just supporting um, clients of those vets. And at some point decided, hey, I wanna go more broad than this and not necessarily always be on site um, with these vets providing services to their clients. So she created a whole line of online uh, trainings for her clients. And prior to doing that, she did not have a, a system for keeping track of all of these clients. And so she was getting so bogged down by all of the forms and the contracts and the and the, the follow-up intake that it was really hard for her to manage these classes and, um, and bring on new clients. It was just incredibly hard to keep track of it all. Once she set up these kind of online classes, which people could self book into, complete their forms, complete their contracts, she was able to double the number of classes that she offered and really focus her time in the right place, which is really perfecting and improving all the content for her trainings rather than managing the administration. Um, Michelle Martia is, is one of my favorites. She has three separate businesses. Um, she started out uh, as a pet groomer and then for like 20 years and then decided, gosh, I want to do more. There's got to be more I can do here. So she started taking all these classes and, and got certified as a dog trainer and really went deep and then started getting certified as um, equ equine trainer um, and then an exotic um animal trainer so she has three separate businesses now one is a dog training business the second is an equine business where she works with horses do uh, uh, donkeys mules and then an exotic uh animal training business where she works with zebras porcupines dolphins like is anyone's eyes opening right now bulging um i, I was just like porcupines really that's that's <laughs> That's both scary and exciting. So her big thing was she would literally get to the, the client site 
and they hadn't sent her the contract, the liability waiver, which if you're working with a porcupine, that's kind of an important thing um, to, be, <laughs> to be signing. But she would get so frustrated because the, the contract, she was like, oh, they, didn't, they still didn't send it to me, even though she had emailed it to them weeks in advance. And it got to the point where she was like, ah, fine, that's forget it. Let's just keep moving. Because it was just a hassle. Like, and she didn't want to spend 20 minutes having them sign the contract when she was only going to be there for two hours. And so it really got frustrating. It limited her capacity to support people because she felt like I can't get the paperwork straight. The moment she set up her online booking system and added the contract to the checkout flow, it changed the game for her. Um, she was able to get that at the time of booking. She always had the contract right on her phone. So she was able to look at the contract right as she walked in to know that everyone was, everything was together and the form, everything they had completed was together. Um, the thing that also uh, opened it up for her is once she had all of that together, she finally felt brave enough to start offering classes because she felt like if she had offered classes beforehand, it would just compound the problem of keeping track of all of that documentation. But now she she offers classes and she hasn't had to worry about a thing. Um, the vast majority of her exotic training clients, all of them are online. She's like, I'm not going to the zoo to train the zebra. She trains zebras in Israel. No, I can do this all online. They signed up, they checked out. I have all the information turn on Zoom and we're ready to go. Um, so it's just really a powerful story about how folks are building their business because they're getting the administrative routine stuff out of the way. They're automating those routine tasks so they can focus on the content, focus on you know getting and exploring new client relationships. And then finally, Natasha O'Banion, who's a legendary seven-figure dog walker. Uh, she created such a successful dog walking business that others came to her and said, hey, I'd like to work with you and over time develop my own dog walking business. So she said, let's do it. Let's create a franchise. And she was able to, with automation, onboard team members and have them have full access to her workflow from what to do at the time you get to the pet parent's house, uh, where to walk the dog, uh, where to leave the keys, uh, you know, all of the, how to, how to share with them pictures and write what she calls a love letter to the pet parent at the end of the, the dog walking, uh, you know, experience. She built such a, a successful business that many of her dog walkers over time, she was able to set them up in their cities as like a premier dog walker where they were running their own business. Um, and she did this by automating pretty much everything. She said, every step of her of team member onboarding was automated they got their employee manual through a saved message uh they got you know if there was a problem they there was a write-up about here's the problem this is something we have to correct that was automated she did get on the phone with people but it everybody knew what was expected and so it was such such an easy it, it was an easier experience to do the work they loved because there weren't there's no confusion it was perfect clarity um so it was it's just a really powerful example of how far you can take automation when you when you commit okay so <clears throat> i jumped right into automation without even kind of defining it uh, if you read this definition of automation, it's the creation and application of technologies to produce and deliver goods and services with minimal human intervention. I bet you're probably scratching your head saying, I'm not quite sure what that means. Um, so, so what I'll say is um, automation is something that we do every single day. It's basically uh, taking uh, a set of steps, whatever those steps are, and uh, creating a set of rules for when those steps should be carried out. So um, let me give you a, a very uh, classic example. I'm going to go forward. A classic example is when you're ordering food for delivery. Uh, so you have a preference for the kind of food you want. You open the app, you tap on um, your zip code, you put in your zip code, and guess what? The app has a set of rules that say for this zip code, within a one mile radius, we're going to find all of the chosen cuisine that you want. That's a, that's a rule. If anyone puts in this zip code in this cuisine, draw a one mile radius and 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 provide a, a set of, of options. Great. So then you tap on your preferred pizza place or sub place or Thai food place. And guess what? You see your last order. Ah, that's a rule. Uh, anytime someone opens up this uh, a restaurant they've ordered from before, show them their last order. If you don't like pickles in your sub or cheese on your pizza, you shouldn't have to put that in every time. That's a step you've already completed. Create a rule, show me that thing again so I can save me time and you time. So you can do one tap rebooking or reordering of your, uh, of your sub or pizza. So examples, so when you're checking out, 
you typically don't have to put your credit card in again. It's save the credit card. That's a rule. Save this credit card. If this person orders again, use this credit card to be able to complete the checkout. Those are all rules that we are doing every single day and your clients are doing every single day and they're expecting it of you as well as a service provider. They see it at when they do, when they buy retail from Amazon, they see it when they book and buy food from their favorite delivery place and they want it as well with their relationship with their pet professional and frankly all service professionals so that's really that's why it's about making your daily life and theirs easier in 2022. so just to give you the illustration saved address that's a rule that's it that's an automation one touch reorder that's an automation saved payment that's an automation these automations are micro steps that make the entire experience so much better you as a service professional have that same power to do that with your booking experience with your checkout experience why now well people are using their phone right they're checking their phone 58 times a day right so the notion of sending them an email or waiting for a call they're checking their phone 58 times a day that's what you said you send the reminder via text on their phone they'll see it there's no confusion, send the form or the contract if they didn't fill out during checkout, send it, e-send it to their phone, they open it, they fill it out, they're done. 95% of text messages are responded to in three minutes. In three minutes, how many of you have waited weeks to get a form completed or a contract signed because someone forgot it, it got buried in their email, they don't even know where it is, you've resent it three times. 95% completed in three minutes. We have almost 100% completion rate uh, when people send forms via contracts if it's not included in your checkout flow. And the other thing to note is invoices are paid within 24 hours. They're paid within 24 hours when sent via text. The average Quick QuickBook invoice payments is 14 days. So text messages are powerful. Why automate in 2022? Three reasons. Consumers are now mobile first. COVID solidified that. Uh, so many folks are doing everything on their phone, SMS. 90% of people on Facebook are on mobile. They're on mobile. Um, contactless intake and payment options are no longer an outlier. They are expected from clients. They're asking, do you have a QR code? Uh, is there is there a way to right? <laughs> Can I scan this? Like the, it's no the email fax that's no longer uh, accept, uh, like it's no longer accepted by clients. Um, it's seen as a hardship now. And then automations are actually really simple, and they can be set up in seconds. Think something like a saved payment or a, or a cancellation policy. In minutes, you can set that up, and it's an autopilot. So that's why automate in 2022. So the potential for intact, it will reduce your administrative time. I can't tell you how much three to four hours um, in a day. You believe it or not, you're spending three to four hours sending reminders, following up on messages that you, you, you've answered 12, 12 times, questions that you've answered 12 times. Um, you're, you're spending a lot of time going back and forth on scheduling. That adds up. Make it easier for your clients. It's no longer an option for, for, for you to have multiple steps. For clients, they really want a streamlined experience. Every other industry is giving it to them. Uh, look more professional. Have a booking site where it's very easy. I can see everything I need and I see your calendar. I don't have to go back and forth. Increase your income. That goes without saying, and do more of what you love. You got into this business for a reason and, and a, ver a, a fair amount of your time is being spent doing things that you really don't enjoy doing and don't have to be doing. Uh, there is a video demo. I'm not gonna play it in the interest of time because I know we're, we're there, but we are gonna send you this so you can tap it and you're actually gonna see a live demo of the app so you can kind of see what the experience is specifically for pet professionals. Wanna make sure you have that. But it really is everything you need as a pet professional. Uh, it's contracts, it's forms, it's your scheduling, whether you schedule for people or if you want them to self-schedule. Uh, it's reservations if you do board and trains um, and uh, a whole slew of other kind of client interactions and messages that you can get done in the app. It's supposed to be super simple. If you know how to use a phone, smartphone, you know how to use this. Thank you so much. Apologies went a bit over, uh, but but uh, there's so much goodness. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you, Chinway. I'm just gonna check to see if anybody's chatting in questions. One thing I would add, um, I deal with a lot of clients who come to me who they want SEO, so more people coming to their website, or they want to pay, like right now I'm doing uh, Google ads for someone. Mm -hmm. The problem is, if your website is not set up for that immediacy, 
Mm -hmm. People come to your site and they're like, okay, yeah, I want to hire this person. And okay, I have to call them. Exactly. That alone will like exactly. lose you people. Exactly. Or, um, or I have to fill out a form and I have to wait for them to get back to me. So if you're thinking about doing things like paying for Facebook ads or paying for SEO, get your website set up first with something like this. Cause otherwise, to be honest, you're, and I even tell people, I'm like, you're wasting your money yeah. because the chances are, I mean, you will get people who will go through the process, but more and more, if, if it's not super simple and quick, yeah. they're going to move on to somebody else. And, and because somebody now, people now are doing online training, it's no longer something where, you know, okay, I'm the only dog trainer or I'm the only person who see cats exactly. in South Dakota where I am. Exactly. Well, it doesn't matter because yes. I can hire somebody and do it online. So really it isn't just, it isn't just saving the time for you. It's, it's that customer experience and realizing that, you know, more and more, like you said, especially with COVID, if I, I, I remember I'm in a, in a business networking group and we were having a discussion a couple of weeks ago where somebody was like, if I can't go to a website and book an appointment and pay without having to pick up the phone and call, that oh. business is dead to me. It's done. And I thought, okay, that's a little extreme, but <laughs> that more and more is, it's the, is the attitude of, it's the and truth. it's not just, you know, trainers, it's, you know, massage therapists and salons. It's just, that's it's true. the world that we're going to. So I think, you know, it's definitely a really neat product, not just in terms of the time it'll save you, but in the amount of clients you'll not only retain, but also new clients that you'll bring in because they won't, yeah. you know, leave your site to go to somebody else where they can book. Yeah. I, you know, Michelle, I, I totally agree. And I, I just point people back to that 30% increase in income yeah. once they, once they get a booking app, because what what's happening is you're surfacing demand that was not right. previously visible to you. And so just think of that group of folks who are looking for you or who have heard about you, but have no way in yeah. that is acceptable to them. And then I think and that would be the other point because I was taking notes. The, the other objection I deal with a lot is, well, you know, I'm using this free, like I have a lot of people, not to knock them, but a lot of people use square appointments, yeah. which is, I mean, it's a free service it's right. for what it is, but it's not very customizable. It, it doesn't work in every situation and they don't want to spend that extra monthly fee and it's like okay yeah. that fee is nothing if you consider how many more clients are going to come in and, and pay for it there's no question about that michelle and we're you know for us we have a free app as well so we just like just like square we have a free app and what i will say is that you know if you're just getting started the free app actually is if you have three or four clients no problem you can do some of those things if you really do have 20 30 40 clients it's twenty dollars a month uh, as an app. It's just nothing compared to right. you know the value that you're creating. Right. Yeah. I mean, you have to spend money to to make the client happy. <laughs> right. And, and the amount of time that it saves you. It's like I use automation for. I mean, like I do invoicing, yeah. proposals, and contracts. And if I wasn't doing that, I'd be spending hours of my time a week on it. So it it doesn't make a huge difference. Yeah. And the thing I like to say is that you have clients who are booking you on a regular basis. And so the notion that you're chasing them down for payments, right. these are folks who have opted in already. So put them in autopilot, put them in autopilot. They've already chosen you. Um, so don't make it harder for you and for them. Right. Well, this has been great. Um, like I mentioned earlier, um, we'll have the recording up hopefully by the end of the day today. And I will send out an email with the information on how to get the CEU um jessica i think it's a good question how do you sign up i will have a link in the email which actually has a um, special discount um for you i i'm like disorganized i have the info but the discount is on um, 25 percent off your first year so um that link will be in the email that i send out later today awesome well sarah amanda jessica michelle it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much all right well thank you Enjoy. All right. Bye. Bye.